very good morning and welcome to our coverage of the funeral of Bertie Old. Celtic legend, Lisbon Lion, raconteur, and of course, just a really, really nice man. Bertie passed away on November the 14th, aged 83. The funeral service is taking place at St Mary's, Carlton in Glasgow's East End, just round the corner from Bertie's spiritual home, Celtic Park, where of course he and the Lisbon Lions brought this trophy back from Lisbon in 1967. The service will begin at 12 noon. And after the service, which we think will be around 1.30, the funeral cortege will make its way to the Celtic Way, where legions of supporters will gather to pay their final respects before it moves on to a private cremation. We will be broadcasting live pictures from now until the cortege leaves the Celtic Way. So please stay with us. However, if you are near Celtic Park, then do please consider heading along. Our broadcast will be live streamed on a big screen outside Celtic Park. So you will get the chance to watch the Requiem Mass there and also be present to welcome Bertie's coffin as it makes one last journey to paradise. So these are live pictures currently outside St Mary's in the Carlton. I'm delighted to say that the sun is shining. There were some weather warnings, but thankfully it's only fitting that the sun is shining for a man who brought so much light and so much sunshine into the world of any Celtic fan that he met. Bertie was a lively character, of course, and to any Celtic fan who met Bertie, and there will be hundreds, if not thousands, who met Bertie because that is what he loved doing more than anything, was meeting Celtic fans, talking to them, making them laugh, and giving them memories that they would go away and tell their friends and families about the time that they met Bertie Auld, and he told them this story of that story, and the jokes have all been recounted, and I'm sure as the friends and family and colleagues of Bertie Auld gather today to pay their respects, there will be many stories recounted that Bertie once told them. The Celtic first team will be present as well. We're expecting about 1,000 people inside the church and many thousands more outside Celtic Park on the Celtic Way. The buses of board members and special guests and dignitaries, ex-players are beginning to arrive at the church. This is the, the same church that we had the funeral service fairly recently of Stevie Chalmers. Also Tommy Burns, of course, very local to the East End. Dixie Deans and George McCluskey making their way in. Great friends of Bertie, of course, who is a very familiar face around Celtic Park. John Clark. Great to see John looking well. Bertie, of course, was a legend of the club for his many achievements in the green and white hoops throughout his playing career. He was adored by the entire Celtic family for that passion and love that he always showed for the club. He had two spells at Celtic, 1955-61 to 61, and then 1965-71, to 71, more notably. 283 appearances for the club. He scored 85 goals. Five league titles, four league cups, three Scottish cups, and of course, the European Cup in 1967, when he was part of the legendary Celtic side that beat Inter Milan 2-1 on May the 25th in Lisbon's Estadio Nacional to lift that famous trophy. Another Lisbon line, Jim Craig making his way into the church, as well as playing his part in that historic day, of course, as... As Jim has told the story, Bertie also became famous for having led his teammates in singing the Celtic song 
in the tunnel that day as they lined up alongside the very glamorous Inter Milan team. But can they play? Said Bertie. John Hughes, another famous Celtic player from the late 60s, early 70s. Celtic chairman Ian Bankia, chief executive Michael Mickelson making their way into St Mary's. The service conducted by the parish priest, Canon White, finance director. Chris Mackay there. Former chief executive and a great friend of Bertie's, Peter Lawwell. Neil Lennon, Roy Aiken. Eddie Gray there as well, played against Bertie in that uh, famous European Cup semi-final back in 1970. Bertie was born on March the 23rd, 1938 in Maryhill. Just turned 17 when he joined Celtic in 1955. Ange Postacoglu leads his coaches and the Celtic first team squad into the church. Come Celtic captain Callum McGregor, along with all the other players. Bertie was known to all, if not most, if not all of these players. As I said, he was very often in and around Celtic Park, and he was such great company that everybody would seek out his company whenever you knew Bertie was around. The players all loved him, and the staff all loved him. And it's why it's important that today, while everyone mourns the loss of, of Bertie Auld, they also celebrate his life and remember just what a great man he was. Josip Juranovic. The team, of course, flew in in the early hours of the morning from Leverkusen. Having put on such a, a brave performance themselves in the Europa League, Bertie Auld was all about the entertainment. And just thinking to those two goals that Celtic scored last night, each in their own way, entertaining. I'm sure Bertie would have loved the, the Panenka penalty from Juranovic and the build-up to the second goal and that great finish from the Portuguese forward Jota. Bertie was all about entertaining the fans. And today we remember the great man who put a smile on so many faces. So having joined the club in 1955, Bertie... Had a loan spell with Dumbarton before returning to the club and he made his debut in a Charity Cup match against Rangers on May the 1st, 1957. It would be just a few months later that the Hoops would record their famous 7-1 victory over Rangers in the League Cup final. Bertie had played in every round of that tournament but he missed out on the final in favour of Neely Mockin. Bertie though disappointed to have missed out on that famous victory, always did acknowledge that the more experienced Mocken deserved his place in the team. 
He remained with the club in that first spell until 1961. He then left to join Birmingham City, spending four years in England, during which time he won the League Cup before rejoining Paradise in 1965, just two months before Jock Steen returned to the club as manager. Although, as Bertie has recounted many times, he, he knew that Jock was going to be the manager, and that was one of the main reasons that he decided to come back. And that's when the legend began. That's when the Lisbon Lions began their great run. And that's why Bertie and all the Lisbon Lions are remembered so fondly. Frank McAvenny, Frank McAvenny and Joe Miller, great friends of Bertie, two players who would entertain the thousands of fans themselves in the green and white hoops. Bertie, of course, forged that great midfield partnership alongside Bobby Murdoch. It was, it was unrivaled in world football at the time. He could play a bit as well, Bertie. First competitive goal came on August the 28th, 1957, in a League Cup game against East Fife at Celtic Park. His last goal came in 1970. More guests make their way from the coaches just around the corner in Celtic Park to St Mary's Church. Try and spot as many faces as I can there. Former Celtic goalkeeper Alan Ruff. You can see Frank McGarvey in there too. An especially poignant day for Jim Craig and the other Lisbon Lions who are present here. Jim's mind will be going back to all the great times they had with Bertie, not just as a player, but as a as a club legend, a club ambassador, and all the great supporters club trips they had, whether it was in Scotland, England, over to Ireland, or the annual Vegas trips that I know they enjoyed so much. known by Celtic supporters all over the world but he was very much a Glasgow boy born and bred proud of his city and of course with that uh, famous nickname 1030 There's Chick Charnley lovely picture there in the inside back cover of the the order of service, it's, it's the smile that everybody remembered when you met Bertie. That gallus nature of his, it was an integral part of his character both on and off the field, as well as being a player of superb quality. He could also look after himself, which is probably a, a diplomatic way of saying that Bertie could be as hard as nails when the occasion arose. But that determination to win, harnessed by Jockstein, was used to help drive the team to countless triumphs. Former Rangers winger Willie Henderson, great friends of the Lisbon Lions. Willie was an entertainer himself and the mutual respect ran across the divide in Glasgow. Bertie, of course, after his football career, and on the pitch would later go into football management, Partick Thistle, Hibs, Hamilton, Dumbarton. His heart was always in paradise though, whether it was at Celtic Park on a match day, at supporters functions in Scotland, Ireland or further afield, going to Celtic FC Foundation events or just meeting fans, Bertie was always at the centre of things, happy to spend time talking about the club, recounting wonderful stories of when he and his teammates were the kings of Europe and one of the best teams in the world. Bertie Old always loved being a Celt, and it's the Celtic supporters 
loved him in return. Uh, most of the guests now in place in the in the church. We just wait the arrival of Bertie's family. We're going to remain on these live pictures, and I'll be back just before the service, which will be streamed live. So you can pay your respects to Bertie wherever you are. But let me repeat: if you are near Celtic Park, then please do consider heading along to the Celtic Way. The broadcast will be live streamed on the big screen outside the park, so you will get the chance to watch the Requiem Mass and you'll also be present because straight after the service, the funeral cortege, as we did with Stevie Chalmers and, and Billy McNeil, will make its way to the top of the Celtic Way and slowly make its way down for one final visit to paradise. So please, if you can, head along to Celtic Park to pay your last respects to the great Bertie Old.
Good morning. If you've just joined us, you're looking at uh, live pictures from inside St Mary's Church in the Carlton in East End of Glasgow, where the current Celtic squad, some former Lisbon Lions and some great friends of Bertie Auld are gathering to pay their respects to the great man in his funeral service. The service will begin at the top of the hour. We will be streaming the service live, so please stay tuned to pay your respects. Following the service, the funeral cortege will make its way to the Celtic Way. Roberti will pay one final visit to paradise before heading off for a, a family cremation. If you are near Celtic Park, please do consider making your way down there. It's a nice day in the east end of Glasgow. Lots of sunshine, a bit cold, so, so do wrap up, but please, if you can, make your way to Celtic, the Celtic Way outside Celtic Park, the funeral service. This former Celtic manager, Brendan Rogers comes into the, the church, the funeral service. We'll finish around about 1.30. And you can watch it in big screens from the Celtic Way. So if you want to get down now, then you won't miss anything, but you will be there to, to pay your respects when when the hearse carrying Bertie's coffin makes its way down the Celtic way. If you're nowhere near Glasgow, then please do stay tuned. We'll stay on these live pictures. Cannon White will be conducting the service this afternoon. We'll remain on these live pictures throughout the day's proceedings.
These are live pictures outside St Mary's Church in Carlton. Bertie's hearse has just arrived. Chick Charlie, of course, a great friend of Bertie's. Mary Hillman himself. Meeting the, the family of Bertie. All the special guests are already inside the church. The service is due to start at 12 noon. The service conducted by Canon White. It's pictures like these that remind us all that, yes, Bertie was a legend in the game, an absolute legend amongst Celtic supporters. But he was also a family man. So as Bertie's direct family make their way down to the, the front pews. All that remains is for Bertie himself to be carried into the church for the Requiem Mass. Final reminder before Bertie's Coffin is brought into the church that if you are near Celtic Park, then please do consider making your way down to the Celtic Way. The funeral service will be broadcast on a big screen on the Celtic Way and the funeral cortege will make its way along there and you can pay your final respects to Bertie in person. We expect the funeral service to, to last between 60 and 90 minutes. So if you can, it's a lovely morning please make your way along to the, the Celtic Way. For those of you outside Glasgow, please stay with us. And you can watch the full Requiem Mass.
for us since the foundation of the world.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, we gather in this church of St Mary's Calton to celebrate funeral mass, a requiem for the repose of the soul of Bertie Ong. We're here today to pray that God, our Heavenly Father, welcomes Bertie, Bertie home to heaven, to be at peace with himself and those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. We're also here to pray for and offer our condolences to Bertie's family. Firstly, to his beloved wife, Liz. Robert, when he travelled for introducing her as Elizabeth to me the other day, that was our Sunday prayer, but, but to Liz, Liz, our, our heartfelt condolences go to you, not only to you, but to Susan and to Robert, indeed to our own partners, Paul and Susan, To Lisa, Tina and Jordan, Bertie's grandchildren, we offer our sympathies. Lisa is unable to be with us today. Joyfully, she's due to give birth in a few days' time. But medical precaution means she can't be with us. And I'd never thought until two years ago, you used this, to all who are watching us streaming it's a new world, isn't it? But to those who are joining in us online in a virtual way, not least to Lisa, we know you're with us here in prayer and in spirit and our prayers for your health and the health of your baby are very much in our thoughts and our prayers. Our prayers also are with Bertie's own siblings to Alan and indeed our thoughts are with Marion. Bertie's sister who is in hospital too. It's not remiss of the fact the family were keen that I acknowledge and thank Phil McCauley who's been a good and dear friend to Bertie over the years. The welcome I extend is not simply on behalf of the parish family here in the Calton and the parishes of St Mary's and St Alphonsus but it's part of the, the wider Celtic family that we gather. Faith, family, football, culture, heritage is what has, is it quite literally in a Scottish context, that the, the, the threads of tartan that make up our club. And to the club's representation today, I'm delighted to welcome back to St Mary's, Ian Bankier, the chairman, delighted to welcome Michael Nicholson too, and the other board members of Chris Mackay, Peter Lovell and Michael McDonald. We've also got Adrian Philby and Brian Wilson and Eric Riley who are joining us. Also delighted to mem welcome the, some of the players as well. don't want to say you've got a lot to live up to by coming to Bertie's funeral but that, that lesson is, is probably for the dressing room rather than from, from the pulpit but we're all here we're here to celebrate the life of a great wee man that is Bertie but before we begin Holy Mass I'm delighted to be able to welcome some of our um, speakers today who will talk of some of the facets of Bertie's life. They'll set the scene for our celebration. And therefore, at first, I'd like to invite you to have a seat and I'd like to welcome Ian Cairns, who's going to speak about Bertie, the family man.
when, I see, uh, when my cousin asked me if I would say a few words um, and speak about my Uncle Bert, I was a bit pensive. Obviously, as we all know who he was, all you guys shared in the life that he had. And then Robert phoned me the next day, and he said to me, don't be stupid. He said, take it more like a chance to get even for how he tormented you over the years that when you were there. Bear in mind, this is a man that told everybody that I was that ugly as a baby. He bought me Venetian blinds from a pram. <laughs> so on that basis, I thought, why don't I just do that? That would be a right good, a right good get back. And then I thought to myself, what a salesman my cousin is, eh? He just took that monkey away and just put it straight on me. Thanks, Robert. Thanks very much for that. The Bertie old that you got was the exact same as the family man. As Robert reminded me, there was no filter. The person that you seen daily, that was his character. That was him. He was no different with us. It might shock you, but you all have stories about him. And my favourite story goes like this. Many, many years ago, and some of you might not know this, but he used to take a wee tipple back in the day. I um, don't know if it's common knowledge, but he did. He phoned my mum up one night, and he asked to speak to me. And my mummy phoned me and she said, son, your Uncle Bert's it, and I can tell he's a small aperitif or two, so you better come and get him. So I drove round to the house, I'm sitting there and you're waiting, you're a bag of nerves, and you hear the taxi outside, the engine's running, waits a minute or two, doesn't come in. Eventually I picked up the courage to go out, chat the door, and the taxi driver opens the door, he says, are you Ian? I says, aye. He said, he's no pain, he's fair. <laughs> I said, how much is it? He said, 16 quid. I said, I'll pay it. I'll not tell you what his answer was, but it was a mixture of languages between French and broken Glaswegian. But the instruction was I wasn't to pay the driver. So we got talking away and the driver's like, look, son, he said, I'm a great football man. He said, I'm a Rangers man. So you can imagine the response he got to the back seat to the guy sitting there with a, the black jeans on, the black shirt, looking like Johnny Cash and a bad night. So anyway, taxi driver says, look, son, he said, all I want is my money. So the driver made the, the critical mistake of turning around and saying, it's been a pleasure having him in here. He said, could I get his autograph? And before you could think, blink or switch a light on, the wee man was up. He says, give me a pen. Got the pen, got it off the driver, bit of paper, bang, away he goes. Stands up, goes to get the taxi and says, take four quid off him, son. The driver said, Bertie, you're not charging me four quid for your autograph, are you? He said, well, it's usually 20, but we'll 16. <laughs> and you, you'll hear all these things. That is, as soon as I'm standing here, a true story. That's as true as it goes. He also had a passion for cakes and tea. And I used to come and meet him over at the Marks and Spencers, just at the back of Parkhead. And it's amazing for somebody that was so fast when he was a player, how slow it took him to get to the till, because I don't think he ever got there. But I was sitting one day having a conversation with him. And you always get into that sense of false sense of security where you think you're actually getting somewhere and he's, he's being serious. And I get talking about the great Lisbon teams, the great Celtics. I said, Uncle Bert, I said, if you were to clone and create the perfect Celtic player, I said, who would it be? What would you do? He said, oh, that's easy, son. He said, that's easy. He said, with the modern day, he said, you need a lot of attributes, especially with this internet, all these photographs and everything like that. I said, well, what would it be? He said, you need Big Bully's physique. He said, you need McNeil's physique. He said, Johnson's feet, McStay's intelligence. He said, but most of the voice said, Jim Craig's teeth. <laughs> he said, with the amount of publicity they need to do now, he said, the big one could, but he could sell them. <laughs> one of his other passions, as you know, was golf. And I was very fortunate. I played many, many rounds of golf with my young cousin and Phil McCauley. Phil used to take it easy on us and Bert hated that. And one particular day, Robert and I met at Straven Golf Club and my Uncle Bert and Phil were already there. And my Uncle Bert said, Bob, Bob, go and get the chocolate and the juice. You know that I'm passed with the chocolate, but go and get the chocolate and the juice and pay the boys on. So Bob goes away in, I goes in at his back and Robert goes up and he says to him, I've got my Uncle Phil, my cousin Ian, pay them on the bars of chocolate juice. The guy says, that'll be 22 pound, Robert. He said, just take it off my account. He says, you've nothing in your account. He said, I won 50 quid at the medal last week. He said, no, your dad bought a jump on Tuesday with that money. 
And again, that's a true story. That's, that's just, just the way it went. What I would say is, <clears throat> he was a tremendous family man, but we didn't have it any different. He loved Celtic, he loved everybody. He was an entertainer, he was a character. My mum and him were very, very close, and when my mum passed away six years ago, um, it was about 40 or 50 boxes, shoe boxes, egg boxes, all with clippings and pictures and everything, all round behind her wardrobes, under the beds, everywhere you can imagine. I sifted through them, and there was a couple of things I found. I found his contract for, for Birmingham City. I found some other stuff, but there was a clipping. And I know some of you are going to talk about fit, but I've, I, I go to it every time I feel a wee bit down just to, to find me about him. It was in the Scotland on Sunday in October 1995, and it was written uh, by a, a guy called Kevin McKenna. It was a series that he wrote about football players. And if I could just read you a wee bit of this, it goes like this. It is a nice afternoon. The game has been played in a chivalrous spirit. The blameless midfielder is having a good day and just beginning to think of a few beers after the game. Then wallop. And his last image of the afternoon that had started so promisingly is of a vulpine grin underneath the Charles Bronson mop of hair before the lights go out. Bertie Old was some player, capable of detaching the tidiest of defences from their most intricate security systems and the laser-guided passes, and also capable of detaching truculent opponents from their senses with some meticulous thuggery. Norman Hunter, in the European Cup semi-final second leg against Leeds United at Hampden Park, a self-styled and self-professed hard man um, had been heard th making threatening, message, uh, threatening, menacing noises on Celtic young gifted midfielder George Conley. Unfortunately for Norm, Old overheard this distressing conversation. Ten minutes after that, the hunter, well, he became the hunted. Old dispatched him with the chilling clinical effectiveness that only he could do. Such were old technical skills in this sort of business that it was rarely booked or sent off. Witnesses at the Hunter incident describe a shadowy figure lurching near Storm and Norman and then the big fella prone in the deck. <laughs> Nobody's sure what was happened in between times and that's the way we 1030 liked it. Inter Milan, Lazio and a host of South American clubs were keen to sign him. So it was just a bit because I was, I was never actually got to see him playing that much. And I think we forget how great a player he was. We, we focus in on the character, we focus in on the entertainer, but we forget that he actually was an extraordinary footballer. Just one last thing. My son, uh, who's not with us today, he's away to Iceland. He, was, he couldn't cancel it, uh, he can't be here. He was looking through the internet and he brought up an interview that my Uncle Bert had where he was talking about my granddad, my daddy Joe. And on it, he tells you the story of when he signed for Celtic. And my daddy Joe said to him, son, he said, at this club, he said, if you entertain, if you entertain these fans, they'll love you forever. You'll never be forgotten. Well, Bertie, you entertained us all. Thank you.
there to hold a friend. What a task I've got. In 1991, when I became chairman of Elizabeth Lyons 25th Anniversary Committee, I began a relationship with all the lines that exist to this day. So I can say that Betty's been a friend for 30 years. But we became really close during the great Jimmy Johnson's illness. It was during this period that I realized what real friendship was. His love for Jinky was immeasurable. In the last 18 months of the wee man's life, Betty visited him every single day. The bond that they had was a joy to behold. I can say without fear of contradiction, Betty Hall's personality, his charisma, his charm, but especially his humor, kept the wee one with us at least an extra year. When Tommy Gemmell was taken ill, we went into a nursing home. Betty went to see him every single day. He big time laughing and joking right to the very end. Betty adored being a Lisbon line because he believed that that kept him connected to the club forever. And he was certainly right about that. Over the past 50 years, Tommy Burns and Betty Old were the two greatest ambassadors that Celtic Football Club could ever have wished for. It's ironic that both their journeys should end in the place where the dream and the plan was hatched in St. Mary's in the county. Since Tommy's passing, Betty's carried the baton himself. He's worked tirelessly protecting and enhancing the proud reputation of our great club. He traveled far and wide to attend Celtic supporters events. He drove thousands of miles across the UK and Ireland. He never let anyone down. If he told you he was coming, he would be there. Over the past 12 years, he's hosted my table at every home game in the Jockstein Lounge at Celtic Park. All my guests have commented how wonderful a host he had been and his power was magic. He's also probably, you've probably seen some of the clips of his antics in my box at Hamden. I don't know how I've not been barred. We have been fortunate. We've had so many great times at Hamden over the recent years, and he seemed to enjoy these victories there more than anywhere else. I think it brought back all the great memories that he had as a player there. I remember at one cup final, we had Henrik Larsson as our guest in the box. And Henrik asked Bertie, do you enjoy playing at Hamden? Betty replied, we were here that often, we thought this was a training run. <laughs> I, could, I could stand here and tell you stories about Betty for hours, but the good news is I won't. But I'll tell you one story that is a bit funny, but it's more to sum up what it is about having Betty as a friend. Betty was a guest of honor on numerous occasions at the North American Celtic Supporters Association convention in Las Vegas. The president of the association, Big Tom Donnelly, pleaded with me to try and get Jinky to come as guest of honor. But as you all know, Jinky was terrified of flying. He refused point blank to go. So I had a chat with Betty and we come up with a plan. He says, leave it to me, I will sort it. We'll get 12 weeks to convince him. He says, but I'll get it done. Here's how it goes. Betty's first week with Jinky. Jimmy's response, no chance. Second week, don't ask me again. Third week, you're not listening, Betty. Fourth week, am I talking to myself? <laughs> Fifth week, I'm telling you you're wasting your time. Sixth week, tell hockey no. <laughs> Seventh week, where is it in Vegas anyway? <laughs> Eighth week, a direct flight. Ninth week, are we going first class? <laughs> Tenth week, will hockey let me drink on the plane? <laughs> Eleventh week, can we get the front row? Twelfth week, count me in. <laughs> Here's what happened on the plane. We're in the front row, this is true, we're in the front row. Jimmy wants the window seat, Betty's in the middle, and I'm on the aisle. We're just about to take off and I hear this noise. Sss, sss, sss. Says to Betty, do you hear that noise? Says, what noise? Hear it again. Sss, sss, sss. I look round. Jimmy's got a wee plastic boat on his hand, spraying stuff on the plane. I says, what are you doing? Was I got the priest to bless us this morning? This will keep us safe. 
I says, Jimmy, that's going to corrode the wing, and the plane's probably going to crash now. I'll tell you the reason why I tell you this story. I asked Bertie, how did they manage to convince Jinky to come on a 10-hour flight? And he says, I just used my powers of persuasion, Wally. I says, right, I'm not having that. So the next morning, I'm having breakfast with Jinky, and I said to Jinky, Jinky, how did he convince you how to come? He says, I'll tell you. So you see the first eight weeks, it was all bribery, day this, day that, day that. See the ninth week, he says to me, I'm asking you as a friend. So how could I say no to that? Before I finish, I just want to say a special thank you to the Green Brigade for the wonderful, wonderful thing that they've done at Hamden Park last week. I'm sure every family and every Celtic fan in the world was proud of that. Very old was five feet six, but he cast it the shadow of a giant. He was the greatest friend you could ever have and the greatest ambassador for our great club. Brother Walfred would have been very proud of him. I'm very proud that Liz and Robert have asked me to say a few words today. It's an honor. Thank you. Reverend Fathers, Liz, Susan, Robert, extended members of the old family, and all of us, friends of Bertie. After I signed for Celtic on the 7th of January 1965, I spent the remainder of that season, plus the, four, the two months of the following season, getting to know the players in the first team and so on. But there were many special evenings, but the 29th of September 1965, turned out to be a very special one because on that night, for the first time ever, I got a going over from Bertie Hall. You might call it a talking to, I prefer to think of it as a going over. On that night, Celtic were playing a first round second leg tie in the Cup Winners' Cup at Parkhead. And as the team had won 6-0 in the first leg in Holland, the boss was taking the opportunity to give some of the younger guys a run out and that included me. To say I was nervous was an understatement, and as I came out of the toilets after one of my frequent visits, I found Bertie standing there in his coat because he wasn't playing that night. He pulled me to one side and then gave me a good talking to about how I was in the team and merit and how I had to take the opportunity to show what I could do and so on. All these encouragements being accompanied by a frequent tap in the chest. It certainly helped my situation that night 
and he was equally helpful in the years that followed. Bertie was an excellent player, great control, a fine passer of the ball, and very sharp over those vital first few yards. He was also very perceptive, never more so than in Lisbon in 1967. As we came out of the dressing rooms, which were underground, and headed for the stairs to take us up to the pitch, the Internazionale players also came out and headed up the stairs beside us. I have to admit, they looked great, by the way. Tanned and oiled, their cashmere strip a thing of beauty, their boots gleaming, they just looked the part. We, on the other hand, were, to use a Scottish expression, peely wally by comparison. Our three days in the Portuguese sun giving his red blotches on our cheeks, and that was about it. It was a European Cup final, the biggest match of the season, and like me, I suspect that everyone was a bit on the apprehensive side. I've always thought that Bertie noticed this and immediately raised his voice and launched into the Celtic song. After a minute or two, we all joined in and it certainly helped us to cope with the big occasion. The Inter guys were less impressed. From the looks on their faces, I always thought that their reaction was, what the blazes is this we're playing? They would soon know. Bertie was always up for a laugh and the twinkle in his eye was never far away. He could be a cheeky beggar and all, by the way, because we were being interviewed one day on BBC television and somebody said to Bertie, do you think that Henrik Larsson would have got his place in the Lisbon team? And Bertie said, yes, of course, right back, of course he could have got his place. <laughs> For those of you who don't realize I was the right back in the time. <laughs> On the US tour, he was always up for a laugh and a twinkle in his eye was never far away. In the US tour of 1970, we were playing Eintracht Frankfurt and in the second half, he hit me with an awful pass. The ball arriving at the same time as my opponent who absolutely flattened me. Furious, I got to my feet and gave Bertie a real mouthful and he held his hand up in acknowledgement. I could see the half smile was in place though and from then on until the end of the match, every time he got the ball, he found me with it. Towards the finish, I was hiding behind some of my teammates but still the passes arrived. <laughs> Accompanied by the cheery shout, is that pass okay, Kearney? <laughs> One feature of Bertie's life that is often overlooked was his rapport with his supporters. I would doubt if any other player in the club's history has attended as many functions, far and wide, as he did. And he always had some good tales to tell. The ones involving me were a pack of lies, of course, but I did enjoy the others. I feel confident today that I can speak on behalf of everyone who played with Bertie when I express my sincere condolences to Liz, Susan, Robert, and the extended family. Bertie on. <laughs> Bertie Ong was a great self and equally importantly, a very nice man. May he rest in peace.
Thank you, Jim, Billy, and Dean. I think you've set fittingly the scene for today's celebration. Celebrating the Holy Mass along with today's Father Eugenio Montese from the Severian Missionaries. Father Eugenio, you welcome us as I am. Father Joe Mills, who over the years has done lots of after dinner speaking along with Bertie for many charitable causes. In fact, Father Joe was telling me just before Mass that at a funeral in St Mary's Duntoka, Bertie, in his usual fashion, was complimenting Father Joe for the funeral and said, that was quite good, Joe. I might just become a Catholic. <laughs> For sake of clarity, Betty didn't become a Catholic um, as far as there, but I remember about 10 years ago being tempted to have a conversation with Betty that when his time came, he'd be welcome to come here to St. Mary's. So indeed, when Betty's family made the outreach to the club for the funeral to be here. I was more than happy because my wee granny, God rest her, she always used to say, it's man that cuts the cake, no God. We're all God's children. And indeed, the word Catholic means Catholos, is universal, we're all welcome. We're a universal faith, we're all God's children, and we're here. Liz, we're here for your family to pray with you, to pray for you, and to pray for Bertie. In many ways, you have gifted to us the ability for the Celtic and indeed the Catholic family to express in the best way we know how. Offering Holy Mass is the the greatest act of charity and worship that we have in our treasury of faith. And you have invited us to express Bertie's funeral rites in our faith tradition. And at the start of this Mass, I'd like to thank you for that gift and that opportunity. As you treasure Bertie in life, so do we. We treasure him in life, but we treasure him in death because we believe in our faith. Death is not the end. Life is changed, not ended. Brothers and sisters, to begin Holy Mass, I invite you to stand. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins so as to celebrate worthily these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord. As our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, may our hope of the resurrection for your departed servant Bertie also be done in his new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. As I was seated, we listen to our first scripture reading, which is from the Book of Wisdom. I'd like to invite Tina to come forward. A 
reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. This is the word of the Lord. You 
we know that when the tent that we live in on the earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting home not made by human hands in the heavens. We are always full of confidence then when we remember that to live in the body means to be exiled from the Lord, going as we do by faith and not by sight. We are full of confidence. I say and actually want to be exiled from the body and make our home with the Lord. Whether we are living in the body or exiled from it, we are intent on pleasing him. For all the truth about us will be brought out in the law court of Christ, and each of us will get what we deserve for the things he did in the body, good or bad. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand to greet the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, then he will take his seat on his throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come you whom my father has blessed. Take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. 
in prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you did this to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Next, he will say to those on his left hand, go away from me with your curse upon you to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you never gave me food. I was thirsty and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you never made me welcome. Naked and you never clothed me, sick and in prison, and you never visited me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and did not come to your help? Then he will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And they will go away to eternal punishment and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. In encapsulating 30 the man, family man, footballer, friend and neighbour, the hard part of the work's already been done for me, so I'm grateful to our earlier speakers. And all extending welcome to the, the church, to Bertie's family, and to some of the members of the club, some who need no introduction, but I'm actually ever so conscious that with Angie and some of the first team, this might be your first visit to ground zero, to day one, welcome to St Mary's. It was in 1887 that my predecessor, Father Forbes, and the Deputy Headmaster of St Mary's, filled with despair at the poverty and dare I use the word disease, plague, pandemic, decided he wanted to do something. And on the 6th of November, a vision began. There are those who would have football as being something that simply happens in the pitch. And the reality is that football is the expression not simply for the working man and say that it's, it crosses the divide of, of classes but it is a political game and if the desire for charity for social justice 
for equality is summed up adequately by the words politics. But that's where Celtic began. And it began as something that was off the pitch, but realised a dream that could be achieved on the pitch. And it would be fair to say that whilst being part of the greatest squad, certainly the greatest achieving squad that Celtic have ever known, Bertie fulfilled that legacy off the pitch as much as on the pitch. Hint has already been made, a reference has already been made to what a great ambassador he has been for the club. And the great tribute to Bertie over these days through social media, I'm not really on social media, but people report things and they're great to hear. I got a wee bit worried last night when I heard that Partick Thistle were proposing that everybody has a drink at 10.30 in tribute to Bertie. I was only relieved to realise they were proposing 10.30 at night because I thought I'd have a squiffy congregation here today if everybody had decided to start drinking at 10.30 in the morning. Bertie's humour is something which will resonate with all of us. His quick wit, even when I was meeting Liz and Robert the other day, and I said, asked Robert, where was Bertie born? And he says, mm. he always just said, beside my ma. I believe he hailed from the north of the city, to Mary Hill, which I was relieved because I always struggled to bury a south sider, you know, the <laughs> east end of the northern of the other right. This is where my organist and cantor leave the building because they are south siders now. But Bertie had an uncanny ability to just want to help out to be friendly. Not always to the benefit of his family. I remember once being at the, the car showroom where Robert was manager and bumped into Bertie who was in visiting his boy and he said, did you get a good deal, father? He said, I think so. And he goes, no, no, I'll get you a good deal. I think, I think the profits were lost that month for Robert. <laughs> but it is a tradition that we turn to scriptures to give us hope, to give us courage, and to give us understanding. In many ways, the past two years of pandemic have hidden from the wider Celtic family Bertie's deteriorating health. But that is a journey that Liz and the whole family have been experiencing more intimately. Over the years you could see Bertie getting on in years, as I say. Often used to think to himself, is Bertie getting smaller or the glasses getting bigger? But it never dampened his spirit. In fact, as Bertie the older maybe a wee bit smaller, his status as a giant amongst us only ever seemed to grow. And here we come to make sense of Bertie's death in our faith context. At the Requiem Mass, as at other times of penance, the priest wears purple. Purple was the last colour that Christ wore on earth. 
He was dressed in purple to mock him and then to execute him, to torture him. And it is a reminder to us as Christians at the time of grief and death that no matter how tormented we are in the face of death, in the prospect of death, Death is a transitory stage. Death is not the end. Because death for those who faith leads to life eternal. And we listen to St. Paul in the Corinthians today. We have an everlasting home not made by human hands. And all truth about us will be brought out in the law courts of Christ. Each of us will get what he deserves for the things he did in the body, good or bad. I think we can overwhelmingly see a wee man who did an awful lot of things. I'd often, if it wasn't meeting Bertie, things here or at the club, I'd often see him at fundraisers for different causes, and not least even for raising money for young people to go to Lourdes. If we turn to the Old Testament, we could immediately take comfort by transposing the word they to simple Bertie. The soul of Bertie is in the hands of God. No torment will ever touch him. In the eyes of the unwise, he did appear to God. His going looked like a disaster, his leaving us like annihilation. But Bertie is at peace. If he experienced punishment, as men see it, his hope was rich in immortality. Slight was affliction, great will his blessings be. God has put him to the test and proved him to be worthy. He's tested him like gold in a furnace, accepted him as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, Bertie will shine out, a spark run through the stubble. So will he. Those who are faithful will live with him in them for grace and mercy await those who seek them. To all of us who have breath in our bones, Matthew 25, the gospel we heard, presents to each one of us a challenge about the daily choices we make. Because one day we will stand before God and say, Lord, when will we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked? made in clothes. And God will say to us, truly I tell you, whenever you neglected to do it to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. We live in a broken world where some political solutions will be that we need to shove migrants back further into the English Channel. We live in a world where vast swathes of continents that are developing have no sign of vaccine, let alone booster jabs. We live in a world where a lot of good needs to be done. This world has been a better place for knowing Bertie Hall. So our prayer today, brothers and sisters, is simple, but profound. Eternal rest. Grant us the name of God. Let the perfection of light shine from our heart. Bring the rest in peace. Bring us soul to soul, all the things of our lives. Through the mercy of God, let the rest in peace. Amen.
Jesus. I'd like to make you stand as we offer prayers of intercession on behalf of Brother Deputy and Jordan is going to use our prayers of intercession. For Bertie that through the love and mercy of God, he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. For the family and friends of Bertie, we remember especially Bertie's daughter, Lisa, who is in with child that cannot be with us today, sorry, I think that was meant to be Roberts, <laughs> uh, that he may be consoled in their grief by the Lord. Lord, hear us. For all of us gathered here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. For the sick, we remember especially Bertie's sister Marion, those in chronic pain, especially suffering COVID-19, those who are frightened or lonely, who need the comfort comforting presence of God this day. Lord, hear us. For those who are in frontline services during this time of crisis, especially those who cared for Bertie, and also those who worked away, who, who are fearful for their own health, that God supplies them his grace and strength. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We remember all those who have died, for all the lesbian lions who have gone before us, and all those associated with Celtic Football Club. For those who are mourning, who each day are filled with longing for the presence of someone they love, we pray. Lord, hear us. those at home or those dear to us who are in need of our prayers. Gracious to hear the prayers that we make on behalf of our brother Bertie. Accept these petitions and prayers which we make with confidence through Christ our Lord. Do not 
Dear brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. This is all the sacrifice of your hands, which is the glory of the name, and the glory of Look favourably upon our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Bertie may be taken up into the glory with your Son. In his great mystery of love, we are all united through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, the gift we pray, by sending down the spirits of all men like as your fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you call all again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of your Christ, you may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your Lord, your church is spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our procurer administrator, all our families. Remember your servant, Bertie, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have gone, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and the
Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For the communion procession, we'll come out by the side aisles and return via the centre aisle. Um, if you're not coming forward for Holy Communion but would like to come forward for a blessing, just have your hands across in front of you and indicate that will indicate to priests you want a blessing instead of Holy Communion. Um, and also, if you wore your mask with your hands outstretched before receiving Holy Communion.
times when we don't know. shadows fill our days. Lead us to a place. Guide us with your grace. Give us faith so
Let us pray. Can we pray, O Lord, that for Bertie, with whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, we pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before our final commendation and procession to the place of committal, which is Gildari Crematorium, I'd like to echo again to try and uplift some peace to us and all of Bertie's family. We know you're always welcome like a passing by ministry of prayer. For the moment, admission is free, but I'm revising that one. I'm sure it would not be presumptive on my part to thank all the folk who've contributed to today's celebration. In reaching out to the club, for whom we're grateful for their help today, I'd like to thank both Ian and Michael and the whole board for their support and indeed that finds its clear expression through Tony Hamilton who has closely collaborated with the family and myself. I'm grateful to our usual parishioners who help keep St Mary's and St Alphonsus ticking over. I think it would be remiss me not to thank Vincent and Teresa who have provided today's music and who have helped even through pandemic help bring songs of praise literally to many who have been housebound. There's also a, a great help uh, Lord Hoy made some of his staff available to help spruce the place up and get it ready to host today's celebration and I'd like to thank Lily for that generosity and indeed for the tour de force from both Jim Simonetti and Chris Nee who've helped coordinate the things that were needing done. But my grateful thanks remain with the parishioners who do all their bit here to keep here ticking over, both serving and all the fact that we're entirely grateful for them. I want you to ask yourself, where has the two hours gone? I know you're not, you've not got a comfy seat with me, but I don't know. We've, we've spent some holy time, some sacred time, we respect and we acknowledge someone whose memory is sacred to us. And we now pray that he's at peace. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Bertie. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. That together with all who abide in Christ, we shall joyfully greet Bertie again. In the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to this place. Come to me, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Christ, who called you, saved you, fear and 
To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Bertie, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is our God. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins we committed to him in your sin. And in your goodness, grant him everlasting life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And he, as we take their food, to this place of rest. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to you from you. And take you to the holy city. Where you will Walk with me, O oh my Lord, through the darkest night and brightest day. Be at my side, O oh Lord. Hold my hand and guide me on my way. Sometimes the road seems long, my energy is spent then lord i think of you and i am given strength walk with me O oh my lord through the darkest night and brightest day be Stones often bar my path, and there are times I fall. But you are always there to help me when I call. Walk with me, O oh my Lord, through the darkest night and brightest day. Just as you calm the wind and walked upon the sea, conquer my living Lord, the storms that threaten me. Walk with me, O oh my Lord, through the darkest night and brightest day.
Very shortly, Bertie Old's coffin in the funeral cortege will make its way to the Celtic Way. You can see there are thousands of Celtic fans outside the Celtic Way. That's one of our camera shots there, waiting the arrival of Bertie's funeral cortege. It's a beautiful sunny day here at Celtic Park, and the supporters have come along to pay their respects in person to a man who many of them will have met of their own personal stories of meeting Bertie and no doubt the smile he put on their face they want to come here and pay their final respects to the great man the church is St Mary's in the Carlton just round the corner from Celtic Park so it should just be a matter of minutes before the funeral cortege arrives here it will make its way from the top of the Celtic way just at the bottom of your screens there just next to the the statues outside Celtic Park and all the way down to the bottom and it will then leave Celtic Park and head to a final private family cremation ceremony thanks to Canon White for a lovely service inside St Mary's and now Bertie's family friends, the Celtic first team squad, coaching staff, manager and all the guests will make their way, many of them coming back to Celtic Park and taking with them the memories that they have of the great man. Some lovely eulogies as well, particularly nice to hear from Jim Craig, fellow Lisbon Lion and his memories of his great friend some funny stories as well and some laughs which is exactly what Bertie would have wanted <laughs> former Rangers winger Willie Henderson and John Hughes next Celtic great Any there too. They certainly knew how to entertain the Celtic crowd, as did Frank McGarvey, the scorer of many Celtic goals in front of that jungle. Celtic manager Ange Postacoglu lovely to see him and his coaching staff and the players all come along to pay their respects we got back in the wee hours from Leverkusen Roy Aitken there chatting to Joe Hart Paul Chalmers on the right hand side just coming out of the church of course it wasn't that long ago we laid to rest Paul's dad Stevie Chalmers what a legendary side the Lisbon Lions where it's only right that they get the send off that they deserve they brought so much joy to the legions of Celtic fans across the world and they will be remembered forever.
So we just wait for everyone to vacate the church before the funeral cortege will make its way along to Celtic Park. Bertie was a Glasgow man through and through and Celtic Park was, was his spiritual home. As soon as he laid eyes on that jungle and as soon as his dad explained to him exactly what it was and what it would mean to play in front of the supporters in that jungle, Bertie was hooked. And from then on, Celtic became his life besides his own family. And we can't forget that for so many in the church today, Bertie was, well, he was Uncle Bert. He's a grandfather, a father, a husband, an uncle. But he was a great member of the Celtic family, a great storyteller as well. And it's those stories that will be recounted by everyone today who attended the service and those that have been gathering outside Celtic Park reminiscing themselves about the times that they met Bertie Old and the stories that he told them. Stay with us, we will continue our live broadcast when Bertie Ogg's hearse and the funeral procession leaves the church and makes its way along to Celtic Park. If you are near the ground and you can get here in time, then please feel free to come up to Celtic Way and pay your final respects to Bertie.
saw a little bit of a lull in proceedings just until all the traffic from outside the church can clear the way for Bertie's funeral cortege to make its way along to the Celtic Way. It's a cold day in Glasgow, but thankfully it's uh, sunny and dry. Looking at a picture of just round the the west stand, just round the back of the Jock Steen stand at Celtic Park. That's where the the funeral cortege will make its way down towards the Celtic Way, where most of the Celtic fans have gathered. supporters deciding to get away from the crowds and up towards the the top of the procession If you've just joined us live on YouTube or Celtic TV, welcome to these live pictures from outside Celtic Park, where just a few moments ago, the Requiem Mass for the Repose of the Soul of Bertie Auld took place at St Mary's Church in Carlton in Glasgow, and the funeral cortege is now just about to head to Celtic Park, where it will drive slowly down the Celtic Way. Give Bertie one last visit to his spiritual home, his own paradise, where he will be met by thousands of Celtic supporters who are waiting to pay their last respects to the great man, the Lisbon Lion, the legend, the, the raconteur, the man who brought a smile to the faces of anyone he met. It's a somber day for the family, but I'm sure as the day progresses and the stories get told, there will be smiles, there will be laughter. And that's just the way that Bertie would have wanted it. applause begins to ripple around Celtic Park which can only mean that the vehicles from the funeral service are beginning to arrive at the top of Celtic Park and indeed there's the silver hearse carrying the coffin of Bertie Auld down from the northwest corner of Celtic Park and around 
towards the front of the stand, past the statues of Brother Walfred, Jock Steen and his great friend Jimmy Johnson, and all the way down to the newer statue of Billy McNeil holding up that famous European Cup, which Bertie was such an integral part of. just stops to let the ball bearer out who will then lead the hearse slowly down the Celtic way but it's a grand old team to play for rings out around Celtic Park that was Bertie's song that was the song that he sang on the way out of the tunnel in Lisbon in 1967 cars behind the the house will stop to let family members out and I think the plan is for them to perhaps walk down the remainder of the Celtic way with his wife and Bertie's close family daughter his grandchildren check Charlie there a familiar face to many of you New Bertie and his family well being local to the, the Mary Hill area and two of Bertie's grandchildren Only, uh, Papa Reith outside the front of the stadium. It's the turn of Bertie's children and wife. Probably there, Reese, at the foot of the statue of Jock Steen, who brought Bertie back to Celtic Park, of course, for that second and most famous spell. Join Jock and a number of the Lisbon Lions who have passed away. It's remembered by all of us Celtic supporters forever.
can see the wind is really beginning to pick up here at uh, the Celtic Park. There were some wind warnings, so thankfully it's stayed relatively calm enough for the proceedings to go ahead as Bertie's family give their thanks to the supporters and friends who have gathered here on the Celtic Way. To pay respects to their husband, father, grandfather. Cortez carrying Bertie Old will make its way now out of Celtic Park and head towards a private family cremation ceremony. joining us for this very special day where we remember one of the Celtic greats, Bertie Ault, who passed away recently at the age of 83. Never to be forgotten, Bertie. And you'll never walk alone. <laughs> 